All right, thank you everybody. So I'm Mike De Palma, Channel Development Manager uh, at Data. We are a backup disaster recovery business continuity company out of Norwalk, so not too far down the road. Um, I want to give you a, just a quick overview of Data. Um, obviously, in the backup disaster recovery industry, you want to be you know feel confident with the place you're storing your data. So I want to give you a quick uh, just recap on Data in general. Um, founded in 2007, our CEO just turned 30 in the fall. So if you do the math, he was 22 when he started this company. Slightly more ambitious than I was at 22. He uh, founded the company out of his parents' basement. Um, and recently, in Q4 of last year, uh, the Wall Street Journal gave us a billion dollar valuation. So he's a true B2B, basement to billion dollar success story right here in Connecticut. Um, so a lot of you probably haven't heard of Data. You might think that's kind of odd. You have a billion dollar company in the state, might not have heard of them. Um, so I want to give you a quick reason why. So we've got over 600 employees worldwide and we're continuing to grow. But 70% of those folks are in support and development. Because Austin's an engineer by trade, right? So his idea was, I want to create a solution that works and that we can support. So you don't see a lot of marketing development funding coming out of us. You don't see us advertising in the airports or uh, you know on the radio and those type of things. We've got a product that works. Um, folks in the managed service uh, provider industry know us very well, um, and we continue to support that product and provide uh, continuing uh, innovation in that. Uh, we do have nine offices worldwide. I mentioned uh, our home office is down in Norwalk on Route 7. Um, we have offices in Boston, Rochester, uh, the UK, Canada, Australia, and we'll be soon opening an office up in, uh, in Asia, actually in Q3. Um, our tech support is all US based, direct to tech 24 7 365. So I actually, before I joined the business development team, I was on the sales team. Um, we were on the seventh floor, tech support covers the fifth floor. So uh, when you, you get tickets that are open, these are real people that I have lunch with, those type of folks, I think that goes a long way. It goes to the idea of us really wanting to support the product. Um, Inc. 500, three years in a row. The reason that's important is uh, you will see tech startups get that billion dollar valuation. A lot of times, they are not a profitable company at that point. It's all speculation, it's investors, those type of things. We've been profitable throughout um, and continue to be profitable. We built it up the right way um, as with, a, with a really strong business model. Uh, we have over 180 80 petabytes of data protected in our data centers, one of the largest private clouds in the world. Um, our data centers in America are based in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania and Salt Lake City, Utah. I'll get, later on, I'll get to why that's important to have uh, data centers on opposite sides of the country. Um, but the data centers are very secure. SOC 2 reports are available to anyone that needs them. 256-bit um, encryption, that's military-grade encryption. Uh, data is automatically encrypted in transit to the cloud and at rest in the cloud. So very secure data centers. Um, and then just industry awards, um, like I mentioned, you know, we, we, we're channel only, so we deal with partners like JKS. Um, within the industry, if you ask anyone in the IT industry, they're going to be very familiar with Datto. We're very well uh, respected there. Um, again, over 50,000 deployed devices worldwide. This is a little heat map. I'm not exactly sure why it started out in Asia, but if you start seeing, there's the UK there and then North America coming up. So we've got devices deployed all around the world. Um, but I want to take this time not to talk about Datto's speeds and feeds and all of the different uh, individual offerings that we have. I kind of want to talk about just backup in general. Kind of get you guys thinking a little bit differently about backup, why it's necessary, and what it can do for you. Um, so most people, when they think about backup, they think it's something I need in the case of a disaster, right? If I have a fire or a flood or some sort of storm or hurricane comes, I need to have a second set of my data somewhere that's secure. And that's right. Um, obviously, if I'd gone into New York City uh, and said, hey, five years ago, and said, hey, you know, uh, you're going to need this solution because a Category 5 hurricane's coming up the East Coast, uh, and your racks are going to be underwater, you probably would have laughed me out of the room. And then Hurricane Sandy came, and it, it became a reality. But when you start thinking of, the, of backup as something you need just in the case of disaster, obviously we're all humans. You have the human nature of saying, well, it'll never happen to me. That never, that's not going to happen again. Um, and in reality, you're not too far off base. So we, what we wind up doing is we, uh, you know, we're tracking all of the all of the uh, downtime that our clients experience, and what are the cause of that? So 97% of all the uh, restores that we do in our data center have nothing to do with fires and floods or tornadoes or storms or anything like that. 97% have nothing to do with those disasters, 
that we think <clears throat> we need a backup solution for. In fact, the most common uh, reason for downtime is human error. So as smart as everybody in this room is and as smart as all of all our employees are, we all do some pretty dumb things when it comes to our technology. We click on the wrong button, we download the wrong file, we're on Facebook, we click on the wrong post, and now all of a sudden something's happened to our server, to our workstation, right? So that's the most common cause of downtime is actually human error. And that's something we're all going to experience. The average small to mid-sized business in America has about 18 hours of downtime a year. Might not sound like a lot, but that's two and a half days of downtime every year, and that's just the average. Most folks are, you know, you're gonna see folks with much more extensive uh, downtime than that. So the question is, how do we prevent that? Um, you could open up the paper or go on the web uh, at any time and you're going to see constant articles. This is an article just about the U.S. government constantly being bombarded with uh, phishing attacks, right? Scam attacks. The reason why I have this up there is because of this quote right here. We have this hanging up in our office down in Norwalk. At least one employee will click on anything and it's so true. I mean, even in our business, even you know, we are in the world of backup disaster recovery, we are getting those mass emails from our uh, operations team saying, please do not click on this email, it's a phishing scheme, these type of things. So we're even guilty of it, right? So it's something that uh, is, they're being more creative of how they can come at you with these uh, ransomware or, or phishing attacks, and so you gotta be diligent. But there's no way to completely prevent it, no matter what kind of firewalls you have in place, and what, no matter what kind of uh, uh, policies you have in place, it's unavoidable that one of these things is gonna occur. So I just want to show you quickly what it looks like. I mean, this is just a, seems like a very simple email. This is actually my boss. Um, gets this email, and we used to use Dropbox pretty exclusively for our file so I could share. We now use OwnCloud, but he was smart enough to realize it wouldn't say your friend shared a folder with you on Dropbox, or it would say the person's name. So he didn't click on it, but if you were to scroll over that uh, web link that they had in there, it's this weird soccer prices checks uh, address. Doesn't really make any sense, but if you were to click on it, this screen would pop up. Now, I hope nobody in the room has seen this, but this is what that ransomware crypto locker looks like. So essentially what they're doing is they're encrypting your data and they're holding it for ransom. They're saying, you owe me money to get this data back. Uh, and if you do, I'll give you the encryption key. If not, we're just going to hold it. Now, you don't have access to it. Now, depending on what kind of plan you have in place, you're either at the liberty of actually paying that or you're going to have to go back, find another your last backup, try to restore that. And you start doing the math in your head because what they wind up doing is pretty, it's pretty creative, not just in the way that they can get access to your data, but they don't ask you for $100,000 to get your data back because you, then you know you're going to go to the authorities and you're going to fight it. Instead, they say, well, it's $800 to get your data back. It's $600. And you start doing the math in your head saying, well, it's going to take me a day to go back to my last backup, restore it, get it all going. What's, you know, what's the cost of uh, analysis of this? Is a day of downtime going to cost me more than this? And a lot of times, more times than not, folks are going to click on that uh, and they're, they're going to say, fine, I'll pay you the money. I just want to get my data back. I don't want to send my employees home while they don't have access to their data. In 2015, $325 million was netted from ransomware alone in the, in the world. And that number's going up. It's not going away. Right? Every day they're coming up with new ways to access your data, encrypt it, and hold it for ransom. That number will be over a billion dollars in the next couple of years. So the idea is you've got to put in a solution in place to help prevent that. So as I said, we want you to rethink the reason why you have backups and the necessity of it and start thinking about business continuity, which is not just backing up your data, but eliminating the downtime that's going to occur from a various amount of reasons, okay? So before I get into what true business continuity is, I just want to talk quickly about what it's not. So a lot of folks in the room have some sort of backup solution and might say, oh, I'm protected, I have that, right? You might have cloud only, which again is great. You get a second copy of your data in a secondary location, so if something were to happen to your site, you know you have a second copy, that's great. In and of itself, it's not true business continuity. Uh, local only, including tape. Um, a lot of folks are still using tape. Again, better than not having any sort of backup solution, but in and of itself, definitely not a true business continuity solution. And then the file level backups, where you're picking and choosing which files you want backed up to a secondary location, uh, you know, external hard drive, whatever it can be. All of those things are obviously better than not having any backup plan at all, but none of those are uh, business continuity. Um, in, in order to have true business continuity, it's really just two aspects you need to make sure you cover. The first is being a hybrid cloud solution. So with our solution, you're going to have an on-premise device that's going to be taking those backups. You're going to be able to do restores directly from that device, and you're going to be able to virtualize the machine that you're backing up directly from that device. 
But in addition to that, your data is being sent off to two data centers. And I mentioned they were on different sides of the country. And the reason for that is simple. If something were to happen just to your server, you can get access to that data immediately right from this device. If you did have one of those disasters occur and it wiped out your whole site and you didn't have access to that data device, you could access all your data from the data center. Now that's going to be, for you guys, the first layer of fallover is going to be to Pennsylvania. Now what if there's some sort of massive disaster that's really wiped out the entire East Coast and everything is compromised at that point? You still have a third copy of your data on the other side of the country that you can access. Okay, so multiple copies of data is key to true business continuity. And the second piece is very important as well, and that's being an image-based backup. Instead of that file level where you're picking and choosing which file, our solution takes a snapshot of your entire environment, operating system, applications, everything. And by having an entire snapshot of your environment and having a copy from there, all we're doing from then on in is just taking block level changes. We could do it as often as every five minutes, um, and, and it's gonna happen automatically. We're just, we're just tracking those changes that occur, so there's not huge backups that are taking place. That allows us to have those virtualization capabilities. This is gonna deliver superior RTO and RPO. If you're not familiar with those terms, essentially RTO means how much downtime would you be able to absorb before it really started impacting your company. If your servers were down for a few days, what would that mean to your company? Not just in lost productivity and, and the reason, you know, you're going to have to still pay out your employees for that, but how many customers would you lose if you were down for a couple days? Depending on the vertical you're in, it could, you could absorb a couple days or a week of downtime. Others can only absorb maybe a few hours. So you want to shorten that uh, amount of downtime as much as possible, and you can do that with a solution. RPO is how much data you're willing to lose. So if you're doing one of uh, you know the traditional, every Friday you plug in the external hard drive, you back up your data, you take it, put it in your car, and take it home because you know it's safe, that's great, it's better than nothing, but what if a disaster occurs on Thursday? Now you've lost six days of data that, you're, that you haven't been backing up, so to have an automated system that's automatically taking these backups for you is very key to true business continuity. The end game of all this is to eliminate downtime, and that's through virtualization. So I just want to show you a quick graphic that kind of explains what this virtualization is. So this could be your server, critical workstation, whatever it is we're backing up, right? Say this goes down, and we've got an exact copy of that entire uh, environment on the data device. We have the ability to spin up a virtual instance of that server or workstation and allow you to access it within minutes. Okay, so that's something you as quickly as you can call JKS, they, they, JKS, they can get it spun up for you, ready. You, you don't have to send your employees home, you have access to that data, right? If something were to occur uh, and the entire site went down, you could do the same thing from our cloud, okay? So reducing that downtime. You come into work on Monday morning, you know that if, even if something happens to my server, I'm not gonna lose access to my data. And while you're in that virtualized state, we're continuously taking backups. So once that server is repaired, or whatever happened, if it was a critical workstation or whatever, whenever that's repaired, we could do a bare metal restore and get all that data and all those changes that you made back onto that device, and you're ready to go, and it's back up and running, okay? Again, reducing that downtime, reducing the amount of data you've lost, and the amount of downtime, which is more important, okay? Um, and again, the ability to do it both locally and from the cloud. Um, this just shows you quickly, um, you know, that first, the, uh, Star there represents your last backup. So this has been a, a week where you haven't been taking backups. Now you've lost a week of data. You want a solution that's going to be much faster than that every few minutes. Okay, RTO, how much downtime you've had. Again, we're also testing your backups constantly. Instead of waiting to find out that backup was valid when you need it in a disaster, we're giving you active uh, testing results saying, yes, these, back these are all good. They're all clean backups. So again, two main components of business continuity, the hybrid cloud solution, multiple copies of your data, and the image-based system, taking an entire snapshot, giving us the ability to virtualize. We have a calculator you can fill out your own information in, so you can say how many employees you have, average salary, uh, overhead, all those things, and you can actually calculate how much an hour of downtime will cost you in hard dollars. We have solutions as small as under 150 gigs, all the way up to 60 terabytes that we can protect. So we can really protect your data anywhere it lives. So there's my uh, contact information. Thank you again for listening. We have a booth in the back if you have any uh, more detailed questions. Thanks.